do that work. Really giving this type of activity more of an emphasis than it would otherwise have. And just to put some, some meat on those bones, 1.86 million zero day contracts traded hands at the end of last week. That's about 55% of total in That's no more than that. So it is a lot of activity, but then the other side of that would be to say, yeah, but it's a ripple in the pond. It's market makers, they, they do their delta hedging, they get it done by the end of the day. It's, it doesn't really move things that much outside of the effect of one or two hours. It is, during the, it is, what is the right to think about that? It is a good point at a time, you know, season, seasonally, here we are. I mean, yeah. I looked up at the volume here at the New York Stock Exchange it's yesterday. Almost at the end, it was like 400 million yeah. not plus shares. Normally, we're over a billion, right? 800 to a billion. Yeah. So, but so, to, to, so here's the question. What's the subtext here? Did this trading actually cause some of the recent swoon? And I think the answer is no. You don't I think, think so. I think that, look, when you get volatility, it increases options trading by depth. So what tail wags the dog here? Does, does volatility cause options trading or does option trading cause, right. cause more volatility? Generally, when volatility moves up, particularly towards the end of the day, you'll have more trading that's actually going on. So I, I don't think it was a huge part of this. No, I don't think that, I think it's wrong to say, that there's perfectly good reason why we've had a, a swoon in the last couple of weeks that doesn't have anything to do with whether people to are your point, options the biggest trading. days of this were days with economic data the biggest that's the right. biggest days of this well, activity that's what, it would make sense it rolls on august 4th cpi on august 10th that's when traders wake up and say oh i have a bet they be trading the, right. the market they yeah, be you would think the volume would be yeah. heavy some of those days we're so fortunate yeah. I, I there's think. other reasons why the market's down we, we have so many different kinds of folks on the investment committee people who do different things and have yeah. different strategies and, and and use different methods in the market bill baruch by the way um I remember it saying a day on on this show that you 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 use zero day options. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on some strategies right now to to implement these. Um, you know, it's a new as the market always evolves. You have to stay on top of things. I mean, I, I've been trading nearly 20 years, and my strategies have evolved, you know, year in and year out in order to stay on top of things like, like these zero DTEs that are coming out right now. I think they have a a pretty solid impact. Um, I think everybody. That, that has spoken here at the investment committee just now has made a good point. I mean, seasonally, there's a lot of uncertainty. Josh spoke about the rate of change in the bond market uh, on, on specific uh, economic data days. You, you, you want to take a defined risk. And that's where these, these become a really good tool is either hedging uh, with a defined risk through a certain day or, or taking a defined bet uh, for a direction. Now, where some of the problems can come in uh, is late in the day. You look at yesterday where the, the Goldman analyst spoke of, uh, that, that final half an hour. I mean, one thing from my studying of, of these dear DTEs I've learned is sometimes the bid ask can really widen up and, and as liquidity starts to dry up a little bit on these specific options. So if somebody starts hammering some of these and really on the other end of it, the market maker is, is, is sort of exacerbating what he has to do uh, late in the day too. So there's just a, there is some tail that wags the dog at times, but uh, at the end of the day, too, we're also in a, in a very big time of uncertainty right now. And being able to take defined bets day to day and use these as a tool, um, you know, you would hope that this could be an advantage. It, it, Bill, it, independent of all of this, whether it actually moved markets at the close in some of these more volatile days, is it a legitimate public policy question to ask about the proliferation of derivatives products in general? Gensler, there's been numerous studies about the explosion of derivatives in general. It is, is there any legitimate concern about that? And, and could it eventually become an issue where the tail does essentially wag the dog? You know, that's a tough question to answer. Um, you know, I've spoken with, with people who, who are, you know, behind behind the scenes here making some of these and, and trying to get what their thought process is. And then really, you know, what they're, they're trying to do is add more tools, advance their products. And, and right now, I, I think it's I think it is a good thing. I mean, there's obviously some concerns from time to time, but, you know, what, what it what the liquidity could be and what the impact is going to be. Uh, I, I think it's a good study. I think I think the regulators should continue to study it. But I, as uh, trading evolves, uh, as electronic trading evolves and, and uh, I think these tools need to evolve with it. And as a trader, you know, you got to you got to stay on top of your game and, and evolve too. That's what I'm trying to do right now, and understanding these as best I can. Yeah, Bill, I, I appreciate you coming on uh, very much, helping to at least add some clarity to what we're talking what about. Terms, yeah. Not being suggestive, uh, suggested in any way that this was an overwhelmingly large part of, of yeah. why some of the volatility was there. But nonetheless, it's what some people are talking about. We wanted you to explain it, and you did. And, I appreciate and when Gensler that. talks about gamification of trading, this is some of the things that he brings in: the, the explosion of derivatives. So there's a broad interesting public policy 
philosophical question. Uh, Professor Bob, thank you. Okay. All right, that's Bob Pisani. All right, straight ahead, our chart of the day, why Mark Cuban is partly to blame for a big pullback in shares of CVS. We'll explain exactly what we mean in two minutes.现在啊，跟别的市场呢，跟别的市场不一样的地方，就是美国的市场呢，它这个金融烟生产品特别多，对吧？最近大家都在热议什么事情呢？大家都在讲这个这个当天的职权，当天的职权非不仅是非常活